name is Chris Benstead. I'm musical director for the Performance Ensemble and I've had the privilege of working with Alan Lydiard and the Ensemble for the last four or five years. Um, part of my job has been composing the music for the various performances we've done. I've also written all the music for the short films you're about to see. Uh, the challenge has been a very interesting one, working on each one individually, trying to find the musical landscape for each, and the texture that might support the words that are being spoken. I hope you enjoy these films. When I left college, I lost touch with a friend. We were both busy working, had families. It was just Christmas cards, really. And then when we both retired, we got back in touch and started going for walks together. On one of these walks at a bridge, we saw a sign which read, Ilkley to Windermere, the start of the Dales Way. And there and then we decided this would be our challenge, 80 miles in six days. And so, on the 3rd of July 2016, we set off. We were really lucky with the weather. And on one particularly long, hot day, we were crossing a field when we came across a little access road, in the middle of nowhere, really. And there was an old garden bench and a cool box and a sign, a handwritten sign, which read, cold cans a pound each. Please put money in the jam jar and empties in the bag. My mouth was dry, my water was warm, and that was the most delicious drink I've ever had. But it wasn't just the cold drink that gave us such a boost. It was this anonymous generosity. Somebody being so kind to two complete strangers walking the Dales Way. And as we walked on, hardly meeting a soul, we fell into storytelling. Childhood memories, happy times, sad times, relationships, just reminiscing. I talked about things I'd buried deep down, things I'd never told anyone before. I'm sure this friendship's stronger now. There's a real bond. Hokusai says, look carefully. He says, pay attention, take notice. He says, keep looking, stay curious. He says, there is no end to seeing. He says, look forward to growing old. He says, keep changing. You just get more who you really are. He says, get stuck. Accept it. Repeat yourself as long as it is interesting. He says, keep doing what you love. He says, keep praying. He says, every one of us is a child. Every one of us is ancient. Every one of us has a body. He says, every one of us is frightened. He says, Every one of us has to find a way to live with fear. He says, everything is alive. Shells, buildings, people, fish, mountains, trees. Wood is alive. Water is alive. Everything has its own life. Everything lives inside us. He says, live with the world inside you. He says, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you draw or write stories. It doesn't matter if you chop wood or catch fish. It doesn't matter if you sit at home and stare at the ants on your veranda or the shadows of the grasses and trees in your garden. It matters that you care. It matters that you feel, it matters that you notice, it matters that life lives through you. Contentment is life living through you. Joy 
is life living through you. Satisfaction and strength is life living through you. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Love, feel. Let life take you by the hand. Let life live through you. The Plague Now it came to pass in those days that there was plague in the land, and many did sicken thereof and die. And there came a decree from the rulers of the land that all should go even to their own home and dwell in isolation there. Henceforward, no one should be seen in the street except it be to buy necessary victuals or profit briefly from some bodily exercise. Now there were many who did enjoy this time for they no longer had to run the race of the rat or attend in consequential meetings. Moreover, they were blessed with the means to provide for themselves sufficient quantities of food and drink and now had the leisure to enjoy the same. But many merchants there were who had goods to sell but no one now to buy them so they could but watch in despair as such wealth as they had did rapidly and thoroughly evaporate. They also did suffer greatly, who were much stricken in years, for not only did they lack the strength to walk abroad themselves to buy what they needed, they often also did lack a neighbour to assist them, and so they did rapidly sicken from lack of adequate nourishment. But there were many physicians who gave of their time and skill to afford all possible assistance to those afflicted by the plague. At great risk to their own health, they did daily minister to the sick with ceaseless devotion. And the people, with one voice, did acclaim this heroic compassion. Also, the number of those who did volunteer to assist the needy did greatly cheer the heart. But by lamentable contrast, there were many acts of villainy. There were those who, when their apothecary did not give them the medicine that they demanded, they did swear at these same apothecaries and say all manner of foul thing against them. There were also those who sought out the buildings where masks to protect the face were stored, much needed by physicians, and they did break into these same buildings and steal the masks that they themselves might profit from the sale thereof. There were also those who, when they encountered a woman much stricken in years, did deliberately cough upon her and say, Die, bitch! Now many were not surprised by these acts of villainy, for they said, Man is a giddy thing, and verily there are few who are constant in their practice of compassion. But in the time of plague it is even more required of us that compassion doth prevail. For if the plague does not abate, if the number of those impoverished increases, so many are devoid of the means to buy their daily bread, if, in short, plague, famine and poverty are our masters, and many are driven thereby to respond in violent affray, in such a testing time, what then? Will compassion run out like toilet paper? Do you see me? Sankofa stirring rituals of memory Cast out of deep ocean magic Inscriptions to recall rhythmic sounds Of a cartographer's feet moving To anchor father's dreams of back home Baptised in mother's tears And a holy ancestral I saw in all shades of the moonlight Bodies spinning truth as if the storm and wind Invoke my skin to remember A soul molasses softly man A tough drum reggae man 
the bronze like man birth from old Caribbean prayers in the drip of British coals my body a well-made vessel that holds posture and beauty limbs like tree roots wheel knowledge to come again to a soundtrack of life.